England's second touchdown was scored by tight end Russ Francis, their number one draft choice from Oregon. In the fourth quarter, third stringer Steve Grogan, number 14, took over for Plunkett and finally gave New England some offense. But the touchdown pass to rookie tight end Russ Francis, number 81, came long after the game had been decided. New England receivers operated in almost splendid isolation as the Dallas deep defense appeared locked in a mystic trance. But here a contrast exists within the same team. The Bills give up almost as many points as they score. In two consecutive losses, the Buffalo defense had been unable to hold huge leads. But the New Englanders seemed anything but intimidated. Steve Grogan to Russ Francis for 38 yards and a touchdown. And suddenly the vaunted Steeler defense seemed slightly less awesome. A repeat shows that Grogan sent Stingley in motion, then play fake to his right drawing Steelers with him and allowing Francis to drift into wide open spaces. Francis registered six receptions on the day, but this one came at a time when the Steeler defense was threatening to put the game away. The Steelers never quite did recover. When there was continuity, quarterback Steve Grogan's rollout offense mystified the undermanned Bills. The threat of silky smooth receivers like number 81 Russ Francis make defenses respect Grogan's arm, but in effect pave the way for the planned runs that make the spindly general so doubly dangerous. Sam Cunningham's 22-yard carry on New England's initial second-half possession loosened up Raider linebackers, allowing Steve Grogan to get the ball to his most effective offensive weapon. The awesome figure of Russ Francis continued to plague the Raiders' secondary. With Stingley and Bataha well covered, Grogan could find no other outlet on passing downs, but apparently he didn't need one. Francis' 26-yard catch and run regained the lead for New England. The six-foot, six-inch tight end had delivered New England's two biggest plays of the afternoon, and his clutch performance was well received by his pass-catching counterparts. Another angle on the play reveals that Grogan looked the Raiders to the right, then threw back underneath to a crossing Francis, who left Raiders strewn along the trail. The odds makers said the Patriots didn't belong, but the Raiders were having a tough time convincing them. This was an emotional seesaw battle that had the lead change hands a total of nine different times. The Seattle Seahawks and the New England Patriots patrolled Schaefer Stadium last Sunday, merely looking for higher ground. But just when it seemed as though the top of the pile might be the only point above flood stage, the rains lessened, sending both teams in a panic to play as much as they could before the monsoon returned. In their haste, however, Seattle forgot to cover Patriot tight end Russ Francis. And this score left the finless Seahawks in the undertow. 
Daryl Stingley's four pass receptions exceeded 100 yards, and Grogan's flip to multi-purpose tight end Russ Francis put the game away for good. Seventeen to three was the final as the all-powerful New England machine churned past the Colts to further tighten this divisional race. The game's first score came on a rollout pass by Grogan to a wide open Russ Francis. The touchdown gave New England a seven to nothing lead and another look at the score reveals that Francis, number 81, simply lost his imposing 6'6", 240-pound body in a traffic jam, then hid in the end zone. In all fairness, Wilkinson is a rookie NFL coach with an unsettled team, while Fairbanks has had five years to build a contender stocked with superb talent. Like quarterback Steve Grogan, number 14, and tight end Russ Francis, number 81. Second down and 10, 137 on the clock. New England has two timeouts. Westbrook, top of your screen. Morgan, bottom of your screen. Those are the wide receivers. Francis. Francis is over on six point. Guy. Grogan right on target. Francis getting clear, working against Charles Phillips. Now we've got a football game, the game we expected going in. All right. He's working over the right side. He had Ted Hendricks with him there for a shot. Hendricks couldn't get back. He put that one right on the line, and Charles Phillips couldn't either. See Hendricks time trying to come back. He can't touch him now at that five yard. What really happened is that it looked to me that Charles Phillips saw Hendricks there and he took the inside move and Francis cut back to the corner and he just couldn't recover in time. I don't know what he was doing, but Phillips was just flat footed. Yeah. But by now, quarterback Steve Grogan has grown accustomed to rallying his team in the second half. And his accuracy down the stretch made the difference. Grogan's six-yard fourth-quarter strike to tight end Russ Francis made the score 23 to 21. Grogan back to throw. Sets it up. Fires wide open. Francis, and he's driving it in. Touchdown. Four touchdown passes in the first half for Grogan. They've had the ball six times and have scored six touchdowns in the first half. What a performance. Jackson's touchdown gave the Patriots a pulse rate, which began to beat a little quicker when tight end Russ Francis, number 81, turned number 19 Willie Alexander inside out for a touchdown. This was not to be the day for a miracle comeback from this talented but troubled team. They were clearly beaten 31 to 14 by a team that was as together on the sidelines as they were on the field. Ball and Horace Ivory is in for New England. Play action. Grogan gets the pressure. Man wide open. Fred oh, yeah. One hands it. Oh uh, yeah. We have seen him do so many times, and the Steelers have given up that long string of scoreless first quarters. New England on the scoreboard. They used up over five minutes on the drive. Steve Grogan and the Patriots found the sweet smell of success as they took on the undefeated San Diego Chargers. The victory aroma that wafted through the air was accompanied by Grogan passes to tight end Russ Francis, number 81, who grabbed four for 85 yards and helped the Patriots amass a 20 to nothing lead by the second quarter. Grogan four for 
five, second down and ten. Flag is down. Grogan has Francis in the end zone. He sure does. The flag is down. Well, we'll have to see what the call is, but right there you saw an evidence of why Russ Francis is so great. The size. Let's get this call. Outside. Defense. No Six points. New England. Refuse. First and goal. The ball inside the seven-yard line. Grogan. Francis. Touchdown. Oh, boy. The hungry Grogan kept gorging himself on Chicago's defense. Number 81, Russ Francis, was the recipient of Grogan's third and final scoring strike. With a 27-7 victory firmly in their grasp, the Patriots remain tied with Miami for the AFC Eastern Division lead. And Earhart may be another rookie coach who will be satisfied come playoff time. With the game safely tucked away, New England rested the ailing knees of Steve Grogan and turned their offensive scheme over to third-year quarterback Matt Cavanaugh. In limited playing time, Cavanaugh has quickly developed into a dependable backup. Against Miami, the former Pitt All-American came off the bench to hit Russ Francis for a touchdown. New England's lead was now 24 to nothing. First place was at stake as the Patriots visited the Arctic Zone. The quarterback Steve Grogan of New England and Joe Ferguson of the Bills seemed to weather the storm as each tossed touchdown passes. But the most explosive force in the Patriots' arsenal was the quarterback who was having his finest season after six years, Steve Grogan. Grogan threw two touchdown passes, one to all-pro tight end Russ Francis, number 81. The other went to Stanley Morgan. Steve Grogan in the best game of his career hit for 374 yards and three touchdowns as the Patriots refused to fold. <laughs> Russ France's great effort brought the fired up visitors to within four points. Second down and eight. Advanced to the 38 yard line. Kavanaugh back. Very deep for Francis. He got it. And oh. Russ Francis somehow comes down with it in the end zone using his height of 6'6. Beautiful play. Working against Glenn Edwards and Don Besselu. They had him blanketed, and nevertheless, Francis came down with it. I really don't know of another tight end in the world that could make that play. This was unbelievable. Well, that's my old world tight end. I'm telling you, he did something right here. Great players make great plays. Kavanaugh threw it up. It was a well-thrown ball, but there are all kind of people around Francis. He catches it with pressure. It goes up, back in his hands. Unbelievable. Watch this. It'll, it'll hit in his hands. Great concentration. Watch his head concentrate on the ball. He never takes his eyes off the ball. And that was a pass that Besselou, I think, thought he had intercepted. John Smith for the conversion. So New England has again taken the lead. They're out in front of the Dolphins. 13 to 6. We're in the fourth quarter. Of a game that could mean the season for the New England Patriots, and this man has helped a lot. New England maintained the upper hand with Kavanaugh's short to medium range passes.
Cross, Francis number 81 was Kavanaugh's favorite target. The big tight end hauled in one of Kavanaugh's two touchdown scoring passes as New England's 24-2 victory kept their playoff hopes alive. But the Patriots were fighting for a playoff spot, and quarterback Matt Cavanaugh responded by throwing for 233 yards and three touchdowns. New England went on to win 38 to 27. However, a San Diego victory on Monday night eliminated the Patriots, who many predicted would be Super Bowl contenders.